Is she? You know, tell me this. Yeah, she is. Yeah. So she starts off with level four black white, relaxing, the petrified. Okay, so yeah, she is a fucking immortal. Yeah, she's yeah. We have we got two magic based immortals in a row. Granted, we did get two two physical based immortals in a row, but still, that's weird. All right. Uh, so I guess we'll swap out. Yeah. Hmm. Now I need to decide who do I want to swap out. Do I want to swap out Ming or Sarah? Uh, Ming for Sarah or Jensen for Sarah. I would actually have her be, yeah. Granted, with her already starting with level four black white, I don't need to actually have her learn. I, I can wait until the black, the black white stuff, black, uh, black white stuff will be done. Oh, I can, I, yeah. I guess I can swap her out for Jensen then. Yeah. Yeah, I guess we'll just swap her out for Jensen. Oh. No. Information. And we'll just have Sarah be learning stuff from Cuck first. Let's explore this room, see if there's anything in here. No. Alright, let's start getting our butts out of here. Stay first. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, noticing that we, noticing the, the, the number thing, since we have, can have five party members in the party, party, I would say we have about two more party members unless if someone's going to actually die, like if we're going to lose an immortal. And also, going to make a lot of people mad, but we do have a new immortal, so... Let we're gonna do a little bit of grinding for Sarah. We are gonna do a little bit of grinding for Sarah. We're just mostly gonna have her learn cook stuff. We're just mostly just yeah. For right now, we're going to have her learn. To, well, we're gonna we're gonna have her learn all of cook stuff. At least some of the cook stuff. Like we'll give her give her level five white magic, angel heart. Mental stability, prayer, and and uh, and uh, concentrate. We'll give her tho those, and so then and then we'll get going. We also will have her be learning a few of uh, few of the accessory skills. Yeah. Oh wait, no, no we can ignore that. Uh, we don't have her learn composite magic. Like, yeah, I mean. Kinda sucks, but I no one did blame the fact that we got a got a, now having to have a um a new immortal. Blame that. So spirit, your shadow. Your prism. Sarah. Oh, didn't mean to do Sarah. Oh. That was my fault. That was my fault.
Okay, oh yeah, you're me. I noticed that, yeah. But yeah, it's like, it's kinda sucks that we're having to do this grinding, but again, blame the game that we got in Immortal. Luckily, we're just doing stuff for a cook. I might, I might have her learn learn some stuff from Mac too. Beforehand. This won't, this part won't be all grinding though, because when I want to go back to the um, go back to town, we'll do some some of that. Oh, Jensen is now de designated heel bitch.
Yep. Looks like it might have to be replaced in the cell battery again. What the hell? She should have something soon. Twelve. Twelve. Okay, twelve. Okay. You know, honestly, if I knew I was going to get immortal against this soon, I probably would have figured out the rest of this dungeon. Although, yeah, you know, it's like, probably would have figured out the rest of this dungeon. So then I would have had to, would have grind for both of them. Don't let him get away! I might actually get going after this fight, actually. You know what, this is gonna be a bit boring, and I don't want to fully bore you guys. I'll do it, but yeah, I, I yeah, we'll we'll get going after this. Yeah, never mind. Okay. Just considering we do have a, um, there's composite magic for Sarah. So we'll give, yeah, next we'll give her the, give her the mana earring so she can have more MP, more MP. Oh, I just realized something. It's just after this cutscene, I want to check my inventory. After this cutscene, I want to check my inventory. We need to get to the Goatson capital. We'd like you to unseal the Black Cave. That seal was set to prevent an invasion by Goatsa, so that Tosca wouldn't be caught up in a war. Yeah, but just, you know, your head was screwed on wrong then. Even with your memory gone, you acted to protect others. The longer we leave Gongora to his own devices, the more children like ours will come to harm. Help us, Sarah. Come. Huh, we didn't get one. Interesting. And we didn't we didn't get anything. Oh. Now we can go to the black cave, but I do want to go we want to go back to Tosca. A so we can rest because we do have a dream here now that we have Sarah. Yeah, now that we now that we, we now that we have Sarah, we can do a drink. First off, 
on rush. Dude, I heard the kid heard from heard from the kid said this bird hit something shiny at the entrance of your house. Some shiny convenience, of course. I fear the one heard tell you. Yeah, yeah, they're also mocks to that, but dude, but that. Good morning, time. Ready for Black Cave? Well, let's be off. I do want to save again, though. Yeah, see. We'll save here on the Tosca one. Sure, everyone likes the idea of peace. I'm sick of the same boring routine day after day. I get out of this village. Not this again. Ah. Reminder, I always do these because just so you can see the full thing. Go on, friend. Even when he is trying to look detached, his true feelings show through. He is timid, cowardly, and gentle. He might try his best upon a threatening expression, but the smile that comes afterward is crisply sweet and almost worshipful. This this is why Kaim is always telling him to forget it. This is what happens when they perch on bar stools or earning a day's pay in the quarry, or walking through the marketplace, or standing on the stone paved doorway. But why, big brother? Tobles, Tobles says with a pout. He always calls Kaim big brother, and though Kaim has never asked for his companionship, he takes up every opportunity to follow him around. He's worshipful in this sense. Please take me big you with you, big brother time, when you leave this town. He begs like a child, even though he's old enough to have a regular job. Sailing over the ocean, crossing continent, con crossing continent. I don't know why I was going to say confidence. Traveling anywhere you like. My heart starts pounding when I imagine that kind of freedom, he says, his eyes shining like a child's. I've always wanted to meet a traveler like you, big brother. Please take me with you. I can't stay in this heck town anymore. He would grab Kaim's hand and cling to it like a little boy. And often he would look around at people in the street or crowds in the tavern, probably making boyish faces at them to show Kaim his disgust. You come from another town, so you know what I'm talking about. The only thing this place has is, is its sister. sister. Sure, it's old, but it's half dead. Look at these people's faces. Not one of them has any spark. All I want to do is get through one ordinary day after another without any problems. It's the worst place in the world. If I have to stay cooped up here any much longer, I'm going to have moss growing on me. No spark? Time didn't stay it that way. We here have behaved with refinement in mild manner and appropriate for a historic city known as the Ancient Capital. They simply have no taste for the kind of ambitions that go with high hopes or danger. Having never set foot outside this place when he was born raised, Kobo knows nothing about other towns. Time knows all too much about them. There are those that used to be the left and right banks of a single town, separated only by a river, but which now clash in, in hatred. It's an ongoing war. Towns in a grip of famine, where the residents snatch food from one another. 
An economy flourishing towns rampant with crime driven by greed. Economically, I don't know why I said that. Economically flourishing towns rampant with crime driven by greed. Towns are rotting houses abandoned by the, by their people in search of wealth and prosperity. Prosperity while just over the hill. There's Sparkle Boom Town, where the people celebrate their riches all night long. On his endless tent journey, time has seen towns without number. And he think, not only thinks to himself, but says to Tobal, This is a good town. Praise is the last thing Tobal wants to hear about his, his hometown. You must be joking, he says. Not at all, says Kaim. This is really a good town. I'm telling you, that can't be true. No place is perfect, of course. I'm not talking about perfection. You've only been here six months or so. You don't know. I've been saying this town since the day I was born. You can't know how I feel. I'm bored out of my mind. I'm sick of the place. I can't stand it anymore. Time is still not, is not unaware of what to Tobal is trying to tell him. I always have, I sometimes have trouble with double negatives. I don't know why. But ne still, but no. Time shakes his head and gives Tobo a sour smile. You know, he says, there's some, there are some people in this world who would give anything to get a taste of what it's like to have this release to make you bored. Well, that may be so. I think you were lucky to have been born in, in a town like this where the people are so happy. Give me a quick minute before I continue. I need to grab something. I'm back. When you sleep at an inn in this town, you don't have to keep your ear cocked all night for threatening sounds in the hallway. Young women can walk the streets at night without a dagger for protection. The children have plenty of plain but nourishing food, and they can play outside outdoors until the sun goes down. Life on the road teaches you these things. The more towns you see, the more deeply the lesson le the more deeply the lesson leaves its mark on you. The kinds of things that Tobal takes for granted are in fact the indispensable keys to happiness. I'm not so sure, so sure, big brother. Isn't happiness making your dreams come true? If all you need to do is, is to go on living, living in peace and security, what's the point of living at all? Tobal is not just being perverse and arguing for a sake of argue, arguing. I talked on time, she's asking these questions in all seriousness and sincerity. 
Kime recognized that Tobel was an absolutely straightforward fellow and to that precisely because he had a comfortable, untroubled upbringing. Upbringing. He has come to feel constrained in the town where he was born. The irony calls for a twinge of pain in Kime's breast. The, this in turn provokes him to challenge Tobel. So tell me, what is your dream? My dream? That's obvious, isn't it? Get the hell out of this place as soon as possible. Go where? Anywhere. Anywhere but here. What will you do when you get there? I don't know. What if you end in some place that's not at all what you're expecting? I said I don't know, didn't I? Stop being so hard on me, big brother. I'm not being hard on you. These things are hard. You have to think about. Well, I've had enough. Not say it like you can't possibly know how, how I feel. Though he stalks away in anger, Tumble will be back in the morning, as worshipful as ever is. Big brother. Your simple, carefree personality of a child. <sighs> Tumble has a wife. Young, still girlish Angela. Whom he has known since childhood. Angela carries with her the crystallization of their love. That is a really weird way to to state she's pregnant. That is a really weird way. I've never heard of heard of having a child of being with a child referred to as crystallization. Is anyone else? Tobel will soon become a father. Tobel's parents, relatives, and friends showered their blessing upon the young couple who soon be young parents. But Tobel says to Kaim, I don't want this. Glowing, he all but spits the words as his two sit far to the tavern's bar. Don't want to be a to want to be a father? Kaim asks, which only increases the bitterness of Tobel's expression. Tobel nods. But as if to negate the an this answer, he mutters, No, I'm glad enough to have a kid. How could I not be happy about that? I don't know. I just don't want this. He can't quite put it into words, he says. He cocks his head a few times just to explain himself. He swigs down his liquor. You don't, you don't have a family, do you, big brother? No, I don't. What does it feel like to be all alone in the world? Kime's only answer is a strange smile. Tobel interprets Kime's expression in silence to speak himself. You're absolutely free, right? Of course you are. No load to bear, no leg irons. I think kids are leg irons. Word? Yes. To tell the truth, Angela is too. My parents. When they get old, they'll be another bird. Working every day for Angela and the kid, raising the kid, taking care of my old parents, and my life ends. That's what the birth of a child is. It's life, like a life sentence. You're stuck. Time does not nod in agreement with this. Neither does he try to argue with the instant. Tobler interprets this silence too as he sits back. As he sits fit. I know what you're thinking, he frowns. Shut up, kid. You don't know what you're talking about. Time says nothing. Tobler, uncomfortable, looks away. I'm glad, he says. More than himself than the kind. I'm glad to be having a kid with Angela. I'm going to do everything I can for me. It's true. I won't lie to you. You have to believe me, me big brother. I really am happy. And I know I'm going to have to work hard. Yes, I know. So it's kind. I'm happy. But at the same time, I don't want it. It's not that I'm embarrassed about it or anything. It's that, I don't know. I want to give up this whole business and run away somewhere. Far away. And now the truth comes out, Kaim says with a laugh. What do you mean? You just said you want to run away, not travel. This is probably Tobol's true feelings, which gives a grud grudging assent. Well, so, how else can I put it? Kaim almost wishes, wishes he had been a little tougher on Tobol. 
I would totally answer if you said, for example, Yo, Tobo, you start for Tobo. You know, Tobo, you started talking about traveling with me around the time Angela's belly started to swell. What would looking at Tobo's face be like if he asked, your family is leg irons, why did you even propose to Ans Angela? How would Tobo shift his gaze if you confronted him with, you know, Tobo, if you want to get out of town so badly, you don't have to travel with me. Just take off by yourself. We kind of didn't have the meanness to ask such, such questions, nor is he given to meddling in other people's private affairs. Instead, he drains his cup of his last few drops and says only, let's get out of here. <sighs> even, if, even after they left the tavern, Tobel goes on about the stupidity of living the rest of his life in this town. The broad, the broad night is clear. The moon is out, it perfectly round. I'm asking you again, big brother. When you leave this town, just say the word to me. Wouldn't it be better for you two to have a traveling companion? Tobo is starting to go in circles again when time interrupts him. Didn't you want to get out there all by yourself? A traveling companion is not exactly a total a solo trip. No, well, you see, you're right. I just go part way with you. Let me tag along in a little while, and I'll take off my, on my own. You just slow me down. I know, I know that. Traveling is hard. But my, sure, my life might be, be dangerous sometimes. I know that. That's what makes it so thrilling. Risking your life is no game. Look, if I turn out to be a dragon, you, you just leave me behind. That's it. I wouldn't mind that. I mean, look, I'm ready to leave my parents and my wife and kid behind. This is never going to end. Time nods with a sign says, all right, you'll take me with you? Tobo's face lights up. <sighs> I've been in this town too long, so it's kind of, it's about time to get, for, for me, to, me to get out there walking with the wind in my face. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Walk down the road with walk with the wind in your face. Life on the road. When do we leave? It's getting pretty late in the year. Did you want to be out on the road? You don't want to be out on the road in winter, do you? Say, how about after some in the past is melted? Time points to the moon hanging in the night sky. Huh? Tobo seems puzzled as he looks up. Tobo seems puzzled as he looks up. The night of the, the the night this moon is perfectly round again after it's waned in wax. Meaning? Exactly one month one month from tonight. <laughs> Tobo says he starts to move as if he wants to say something. He probably wants to say, that's too soon. His face betrays a look of hesitation and confusion. There's after when he's gates in his usual endless chatter. A month from now? That's the middle winter, big brother. I know that. Wouldn't be hard going through the pass. You don't want to go? No, that's not it. If you don't like it, you don't have to come with me. I'm leaving the night of the next full moon. That's all there is to it. Okay, then, big brother. I'll go. I'm definitely in. The night of the next full moon. Angela would be having her baby right about then. The month slips by. Toward the beginning, and uh, toward the beginning, Tobel is excited. Whenever he they meet, he reminds Kind, "Don't forget your promise, big brother." Oh, oh, excuse me. After the waning moon has disappeared from the sky, however, he begins to grow more reserved. The vanished moon reappears in the sky and waxes little by little. Tobel stops tra tra trailing after Kaim. Someone goes so far as to slip away through a crowd, which seems Kaim approaching in the marketplace. Kaim notices Tobel's change of attitude. It is something he expected to happen, and he was even counting on. He ends upon her swollen belly. Angela wears a smile of deep sincerity as she stops at the market. 
Not just Tobal, but everyone who counters that smile of hers will surely come to realize this. The dreams of the young, to be sure, involve doing what you want to do. But it's not the only kind of dream there is. When people grow up, they... S I actually lost my place for a quick second. <laughs> when people grow up, they see that there is another kind of dream. And that is to wish for the smile of the one you love and who loves you in return. For it to all for long it's long for it always and forever. That is another kind of dream that people come to understand when they grow up. The moon is full again. In its perfect roundness, the moon floods the empty stone paved road with brilliant light. Light. Tobal comes running, out of breath, to the empty room where time has completed his preparations for travel. Tobal is carrying nothing. He's not even changed out of his everyday clothing. Big brother, I'm so sorry, he pants, gasping for breath. He ducks his head repeatedly before kind of apology. You changed your mind, time asked, trying not to smile. No, not at all. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I'm planning to go with you, big brother. Only Anselm went to labors. The sun was going down, he says. They called the town's most skilled and experienced midwife. The Tobal saw his heard baby cry. The birth is taking much longer than it should. Anselm is giving it everything she's got. My mother and father are praying for it for all they're worth. Sleeps until the baby's safely born. I want to stay with Angela. She says it calms her down to hold my hand, so I I really can't leave her now. Time nods to him, full understanding. So please, big brother, wait just a little longer. As soon as I've seen the baby be born, I will leave home. I swear, I'll definitely go. So just a little longer. Even as she speaks, his feet as are stamping impatiently on the ground, his eagerness to rush back home. I understand, says so time. I'll wait until the moon is directly overhead in the night sky. Don't worry, I won't take that one. You just have to wait a little while, just a very short while. No hurry. But on the other hand, I want you to promise me one thing. What's that? When the baby is born, I want you to hold it in your arms. Don't come back here until you've held the baby. Understood? Tobal looks at him with a puzzled expression. He nods in agreement and says, Understood. <clears throat> Understood. I'll do exactly that, big brother. Be sure to wait for me. Tobal charges out of the room with even, great, with even greater force than when he came in. The sound of his footsteps running in the stove pavement draws away. When time is wrong, is when time is sure he is gone, a smile slowly spreads across his face. Tobal never comes back. As the moon reaches, reaches its zenith and begins to dip towards the west, signs of light appear in the eastern sky. Time note approaches the mountain pass on the edge of town. He will be traveling alone. <laughs> Heading up to the pass, he walks swiftly. He has to shake off the sound of Tobol's voice remaining in his ears. Big brother time. I'm sorry, big brother. I'm sorry. You can, you can imagine the voice all too clearly. Tobal bowing his head in abject apology. There's no, there's no need for him to hear the actual voice. Long after he's left the town, he continues to see Tobal's wish worshipful smile in the eye of his mind. Tobal would not have provided much support as traveling companion, but a journey together would have given them both much to laugh about. But never mind. This is fine, time tells himself as he ups up his face even more. He's not the least bit resentful or angry at Tobal for having broken his promise. Quite the contrary, he'd like to bless Tobal for having chosen to stay in his native place and protect his home. 
All the more so because this is a dream that can never come true for a kind himself. A frigid wind tears through the freed on pass. Its cries of a newborn baby could fight on that wind be heard up here. Time chuckles at the thought. I, I would would like to notice. I hope people were able to hear the cr the crying sound while I was reading that because there actually was baby crying. Will Tobo abandon his dream to leave his hometown, or will he start looking for another big brother? Help oh, conceal his fear of going on the road alone. I was no way to tell. Just leave it unresolved. Tobo could not take the road to the road the night his shadow was born. The hands in which he held his newborn baby were useless for travel for Christian. If only for that reason, he took one step forward toward becoming a grown-up. Let's go, kind mutters to himself as he crosses over the pass. Look, Angela, he's smiling. The happy smile that Tobel fixed on his baby will be travel companion enough for time until he reaches the next hand. Treasure hunt and French deep in memory. Oh. Uh, I. Yeah, yeah, we could go to the sorcerer's mansion to get that. Liam's treasure. Treasure that Liam held dear. Okay, Cliff of North Cape. Okay. Okay, so we have two places to go before we get going. Before we head off to the, to the cave. Actually, let's look, let's actually go and look to see if we can. Oh, forgot, forgot the webcam. Forgot the webcam. <laughs> I want to go. I want to. I want to check the shop. So I want to see. It's like okay. Can do we have anything for Sarah? Should be. Uh, we're good for us. Yeah, we'll get one for Sarah. Yeah, we'll get one for Sarah. All right, so let's let's go and check these check the spots that we need. Oh, need to go back to town real quick. I did miss um. There's another treasure around that we can grab here, by the way. So let's go grab that. Uh, you know, family house. I believe it was this one. Also, for those of you wondering, thinking, oh, hey, I'm ruining the fun by just using a guide. Blame the fact that some of these can be actually be kind of annoying. Like, I would never have thought to go back to, um, to finding the Demo fa Dino family. Right, there we go. That's the mark for the treasure here. Now let's head to the cape and the mansion and get those treasures. All right, so it's near the it's near the door. Right there. Fires. That's the spirit magic. And that's level four. Inflicts virus on it. Hmm. I wonder what that does. We'll learn about that later. The Northern Cape. Ah, there it is. Hey, 
Ailment Void. Another spirit magic. There's the last level of level three. Inc ah, cool. That actually would have been kind of help. That actually would have been kind of helpful in that dun in the la that last dungeon. Not gonna lie, I don't like the fact that it does that. It's like I don't like the fact that we had to wait till now to get that. It's like that would have been royally helpful in the dungeon. I also want to check something. Where's the last? Where's that remaining level two? Ooh, okay, we'll wait. We'll wait. Okay, we'll wait. Which we'll okay. Okay, so looking at the thing looking at the guide, there's apparently a uh there's apparent that spell is in a spot we can go to, but that's not not available till for now. So we'll complete the cave and then we'll go go and try try that. We'll complete the cave. We'll, yeah, we'll get through the black cave. Like black cave. Then we'll do that. No. Let's go. Saren and Oh, yeah. I think we're gonna take a take go on that quick little intermission. So before we explored Black Cave, so yeah, we are back. Mm -hmm. 